So I'm Justin Malden and I'm the Director of Marketing at Papaya and I handle all of North America and Europe, PR events, social media for the company. It's a good question. I mean, for starters, I think building out lists of app review sites and understanding who your niche audience is. So for example, um, making sure that you engage with bloggers, um, and really get them excited about your product before it's already out into the market. Uh, I think too many developers wait until it's already almost at the cusp of being released or already released before they start handling the marketing, but marketing begins from day one of the idea and the concept. So um, it's a lot easier to get on blog sites and review sites than TechCrunch, so I would definitely target those. You'll get more valuable feedback from the communities as well. Um, I would also create a press list. so have everything from screenshots, logos, contact information. If you have concept art, put that in there. Um, and the other thing is, if you are gonna be targeting journalists, make sure to establish relationships with, with them well in advance of when your product's ready. So you, most of these guys are pretty reachable on social media, and it'd be great if you could take them to lunch or really just go the extra mile to show that you're not just trying to pitch your angle, really try to establish a relationship that you can um, assist them in stories and they can help you and you have product launches. I think a big piece is growing the developers that are in our network that are using our tools. You know, when we initially created AppFlood, it was because some of our partners that we work with, for example, Pocket Gems came to us and they wanted to exchange traffic with us. but. You know, it was just, there was no real easy way for, in the marketplace for us to do that. You know, currently other solutions, uh, it's sort of a lengthy process doing a direct deal with someone. You have to have requirements for traffic and the types of apps that are gonna be, you know, exchanging. And we thought, let's build something that's really frictionless so that can just work from day one. And once we built the tool, we thought, well, why not just, you know, put it out there, make it free and, you know, really put the power in, back in the hands of developers. So I think for, for us, it's, it's just you know, another tool set that we offer developers. It's been free from the get-go um, that just sort of goes along with who we are as a company. I mean, you hear it all the time, it's discoverability, right? I mean, so there's a you know, million and a half apps out there. Um, I think Nielsen had reported that 53% of consumers are still discovering apps through the App Store, um, which really already favors the apps that have already been you know, exchanged and started to be installed. Um, and then of that one and a half million apps that are out there, AppTrace came out last July, I believe, and said that about 400 to 700,000 of those apps are zombie apps. They've never ever been downloaded. So there's this huge glut of apps that are out there. Consumers really aren't spending the time to look for the apps. I mean, the average time is about three to 10 minutes the consumers are gonna look for new apps. They're not gonna compare hundreds and hundreds of apps on their mobile device. Um, so really, I think, you know, curated lists still reign supreme, editors pick, staffs pick, top 50. So discoverability is a huge issue. The other one I would say is marketing. Um, this quote, uh, I, I feel like is absolutely amazing. It's 52% uh, of developers um, set aside zero dollars for marketing, even though 96% believe marketing is necessary. Which, I mean, that's just like a huge problem in and of itself, right? Um, and probably explains why 60% of apps never even break even. Um, so I think you've really got this issue where there is a way to get installs and that's by paying for it through advertising. Um, but then you start talking about the capital requirements for something like that. You know, we had a partner recently reach the top 50 in the iOS, you know, top games, and they were seeing about 50,000 downloads a day. So to put that in perspective, if, you know, at, at the very minimum, it's a, it, you know, the average price to, to get a user is about a dollar, at least on iOS, if not more expensive. Um, we're talking about forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 put your app up there, um, you know, organic traffic will help, but that's an enormous amount of money, I think, for developers who just don't have that kind of capital set aside. They might be bootstrapping it, they might have got like a seed round, but they just really don't have the marketing resources there to really take advantage of it. One thing we talked about is that consumers find apps through, um, you know, the curated list, but I think the second highest way is through word of mouth. So you've got to start with grassroots, 
from day one. You know, again, finding out who your niche audience is. If it's, you know, for kids, reach out to moms and dads. If it's for, you know, it's about cars, reach out to mechanics, reach out to people who are influential in that specific niche and start to get them excited about it. Bring them in um, and do a beta test. You know, I, I cannot tell you how much it pains me to see developers launch um, because they've just been working on their baby for a year, right? And they just want to get it out the door. But if they had just taken that extra month to do a beta test, they would have found all the bugs. They would have found all the problems. And you know, there's a huge there's a huge um, opportunity window in those first 30 days when you launch an app because Google and Apple they they give um, these apps you know more favorability in terms of ranking. So if your app has bugs in it, if it's if things aren't working, if it's getting low reviews, it's going to be very impossible to come back from that. So. Um, I've seen too many apps go down that way. That's why I really think you've got to beta test and you've got to you've got to know your audience and you've got to reach out. So use those social media channels. The last thing I'll say on that is, I think in the past there's this. Um, it's it's much easier for companies to just push out messaging, this sort of push marketing, and in today's age, it's a push and a pull. And if you are going to say, I'll have a blog, I'll have a Facebook and a Twitter and a Tumblr and all this stuff, if you aren't engaging the customers and your future consumers, then you've missed the entire point of this. So you have to be committed to just, you know, um, being there every day and engaging them if you're going to create this community around your app um, that will thrive once it's launched.